One. Welcome everybody to the Wolfpack Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Mike LaPlante, and here with me as always is my other co-host, Michael Bonney. How's it going? What up? Uh, we are missing our other co-host, Dylan. He is on vacation right now in Arizona, visiting the parents. We miss him. Uh, hope he's having fun up there. He's supposed to be back. He should be here. Well, he needs to get back sooner rather than later. But, uh, you know, you ready for some football? I mean, we're recording this on Saturday. Normally, we record it on uh, Thursdays. We were a little late getting to this. You guys can blame the plant. Yep, I will be the scapegoat for this. It's it's all good. But as we're recording this, uh, Buffalo is playing Denver currently. Uh, so we're just going to skip past that game. There's no point. You're, it's not like you're going to get any lineup changes in now. So... You want to jump into some game previews then? No, I don't. I'm, I think we should just call it right now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's witty. Uh, so we'll, we'll start with the later sa- Saturday night game. Uh, Carolina at Green Bay. <laughs> Can you hear my dad? Yes, yeah, Marge Simpson's sister. Yeah, I kind of figured. That crazy motherfucker. But that's all right. That's just like dad, everybody. He's a cool dude. He's a loud talker. <laughs> but uh, the big news with this Carolina Green Bay game is McCaffrey was officially ruled out. Unfortunately, you're not going to get him for another week of the fantasy playoffs. DJ Moore is in, though. Yes, that's good. He's off the COVID list finally. Uh, maybe he can have one of his boom weeks this week. Be nice. <laughs> but, uh, you know... With this tough Packers secondary, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about not playing Teddy Bridgewater this week. No, I don't know how you no guys fans. feel. But with There's the news no of McCaffrey. Here. There's only one. Yeah, I mean. I <laughs> the, no, I was just about to say it, too. It's in spirit. <laughs> this is him in spirit because we're going to be talking about Mike Davis. With McCaffrey being out, uh, it just seems like every week that they're using him just like how McCaffrey would be using this offense, and it just equates to points. Makes you think, so, is McCaffrey really all that great? Yes, is he, he is. a really good fantasy football player? Both? I think the answer is both. I just don't think he is as great as everybody thinks he is because this is a part of the offense. They just want to use the running back. Because Mike Davis would, look, legit looks almost just like him just not as explosive i guess in the run game and see but here's the here's the double advocates that i'm i'm finding it hard to believe that it can't just be the scheme they switched offensive coordinators i mean it was ron rivera last year and mccaffrey was doing the same thing and this year it's uh i can't matt remember rule. the guy it's matt rule but it's he's not the offensive coordinator it's joe brady yeah, from joe lsu brady. And I mean, it's almost the same exact offense. He's, it seems like. it, he's playing it like how he did at LSU, where he got Clyde Edward, Edwards Hilaire the ball a shit ton. So he likes to use the running back, at least. Joe and Brady's his up. and his slot receivers, and that would explain why uh, Curtis Samuel's all of a sudden busted out of the scene. That's just because Teddy Bridgewater. He doesn't feel safe necessarily throwing the deep ball. So he keeps it in between the numbers where he, that's like legit his bread and butter. That's why you see Curtis Samuel catching a lot and why you see Robbie Anderson with more targets than DJ Moore. Yeah, I mean, Curtis Samuel's coming off a week of nine targets last week with seven receptions for 68 yards. I mean, that's a solid week. Uh, he's, he's like any. DJ was also out, though, so. Yeah, that's true. But you like any receiver that gets seven, uh, nine targets. Uh, but with DJ Moore in, uh, like I said, this is a, yeah, this is a tough secondary. So he's he's not gonna do a whole lot, I think, in my opinion. And he might be a guy that, in, in my opinion, you if you have other options, you could bench this week if you're in a fantasy playoffs. But uh, Robbie Anderson, we didn't really talk much about him because, I mean, he's going to draw Jair Alexander, but he's just going to get force-fed targets with Teddy. That's just how Teddy works. You'd like to think so. I'd be – obviously, you have to start him, but, man, I'd be scared. 
Yeah, and Jair is top three in uh, pro fantasy football focus for uh, cornerbacks this year. So he he ain't no slouch. So, and then the tight end in this offense, Ian Thomas, is irrelevant. So we will just skip over that position. Hey, sometimes he catches a touchdown. I'm pretty sure. You're pretty sure? Yeah. Because I'm not sure at all. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll move on to the uh, the headlining quarterback of this matchup, Aaron Rodgers. Start him. The Panthers can't stop anybody. You're going to have a great week from Aaron Rodgers. Am I right, Ike? Sorry, I was looking at Ian Thomas. He has a 5.3 <laughs> team target percentage. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Oh boy, so man! Yeah, if he was if use... if he was playing in Kansas City, he'd get targeted less than the offensive lineman in the red zone. <laughs> yeah, we just playing <laughs> the game. Jesus. Yeah, I could see yeah. why we do that. Yeah, I I don't know why, but the tight end is not a part of Matt Rule's offense or Teddy Bridgewater's for that <laughs> matter. But uh, Aaron Rodgers, smash start. Aaron Jones, smash start. Uh, I know it's very hard to see both a quarterback and running back going off in the same game, but this is that type of matchup. W- would you agree, Ike? Oh, yeah. These guys are all startables. The only- Devontae Adams, you're starting. Robert Tanyan, you're starting for sure now. Yeah, I mean, with Devontae Adams now having eight straight games with a touchdown, I'm pretty sure that set a franchise rec- record for the Packers. I mean, he's making his argument for best receiver this year. In, in the league. I mean, yeah, he misses a few games, but this guy is just too involved in this offense. That's a lot coming from a Bears fan. <laughs> but uh, the one I want to talk about, and people are kind of maybe maybe wondering because he had a good week last week, MVS, Marquez nope. Valdez, Scanling. Don't do it. There's no way you can trust him in a playoff matchup, right? I would rather do what we said before and car- uh, do a curse Samuel over him. I would have to disagree only because of the matchup. I don't, but it's the same. I don't trust either. I don't trust Curtis Samuel and I don't trust Valdez Scantling. I'm just the. He seems like he's created that chemistry with Aaron Rodgers that Alan you Lazard have to had. Hope for but f- a big touchdown. It's not like he's gonna catch eight balls for a hundred yards. There, the most he's ever caught was like five. Uh, six actually, and that was last week. Oh, yeah, he caught all six of his targets last week. Believe it or not, didn't drop a single ball. I think that's why the there's kind of this hype on him because Aaron Rodgers does love a guy that does not drop balls when thrown his way, and he finally proved that he could catch all of them. Playoff game, I would not be doing it. Well, yeah, no, I mean. It, if you're if you're for if you're forced to, there's just some positivity there. I mean, I would even go with Curtis Samuel too, just because of his involvement in the rushing game. But yeah, I mean, flex at at very very most. That's just my opinion though, because of the matchup. Uh, you're not playing Alan Lazard until he shows up more. Uh, and then, like you said, Robert Tanya, he's a must start. That, that's pretty much all for this game. Then we'll move on to uh, the next game, the first game for Sunday. <clears throat> Tampa Bay versus the uh, Atlanta Falcons. We got Tom Brady bro- uh, rolling in into Atlanta. You're starting Tom Brady, obviously. Is he a QB one this week? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna let. Uh, I, I'm gonna do. Sucks. They do. Uh, but my my thought is with Julio being ruled out, Atlanta might not be able to keep up with this Tampa Bay offense. And they might turn to the run game a little bit more. That's all I'm thinking of. But, yeah, other than that, the matchup for Atlanta is good. They allow, the, I believe it's the second best to wide receivers for fantasy points, only behind the Seahawks. So, yeah, I mean, play Tom Brady just, uh, for me, I think it's a little bit of a trap. No. For me. Why? <laughs> but, what has Atlanta shown that they they can stop a quarterback? Running back, sure. Yeah, no, they they definitely stopped the running back. So that's the one thing that scares me about my prediction. If they can't stop the run, then Tom Brady's just gonna throw all over him. I'm just saying it's in the it's in the realm of outcomes. But uh, news of Tampa uh, Tampa Bay news of Ronald Jones uh, having the surgery on his finger, same surgery that 
Chris Godwin had a couple weeks ago, getting the pin in his finger and being placed on COVID. Pretty much know he's going to be out, and Leonard Fournette was told he was going to have the starting position this week. You like him in this matchup, even though it's tough? No. He's got potential. He's in Atlanta. Obviously, it's because they get thrown on all the time, but they're just good against running backs. They have good uh, defensive tackle and linebacker Deion Jones. That's probably why they can stop the run. Yep, no, I, I agree with you. Uh, I'm just The reason I bring it up is because when Leonard Fournette was being used with Ronald Jones, he was the pass-catching back, so he has potential here to be a every-down back in this offense for this game. True. I mean, can, you can I see that I'll coming. I use LaShawn McCoy a little bit more. Yeah, I mean. Not as much, long as, but, like, they'll obviously get him a few times. Hopefully. Hopefully he won't be uh, a healthy scratch like Leonard was last week. But uh, well, that's, that's all. You can't trust him. He <laughs> just last I... week he's a healthy scratch. This week, all right, you're starting. <laughs> uh, to make it clear, I'm talking about these guys, but there's not many of them I trust. <laughs> but that that should be enough about Fournette then, because it, it was Ronald Jones leading the show, and I mean. Unless it's multiple weeks, it's just going to be Ronald Jones back next week. So we'll move on to the wide receivers. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Antonio Brown. What a shit show this has been. No, I mean, I can you trust that bad? I, I would be trusting Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Even after Godwin's week last week, only uh, catching two balls, I believe. Let me see that real quick. He, uh, yeah, he had three targets, two catches for 25 yards. Against a very good matchup in the Minnesota Vikings. You're not scared just a little bit, even with the, like, I know he only got uh, two receptions, but uh, three targets? He's still running more routes than Antonio Brown, so I like him more than him. Antonio Brown got five targets, though. I know. I mean, That's volume rules. Yeah, and then it was uh, Mr. Vulture, Scotty Miller, coming in and stealing his uh, slot touchdown. On a very good throw by Tom Brady. Uh, but that was I would, a good throw, actually. I know, it was very good for a deep pass. He has not been good on those. Ooh, Cole Beasley just got knocked the fuck out. Yeah, I would but, not be playing Antonio Brown, though, if I were you guys. No, I don't trust Antonio Brown. and Him and Tom Brady just can't connect for some reason. I'm with on you on trust. play. Like, they're getting all these little, like, stupid bubble plays and all that stuff but they're they're off on the medium to deep plays yeah like I, I would have to agree with what you said in the beginning i trust mike evans but at this point i'm not trusting chris godwin you're still rolling him out there but i just don't trust it, it could have been the healing of the finger that could have been an issue uh, but it's just been too erratic for me i think mike evans is the only guy you can really trust from this receiving core besides maybe gronk Oh, yeah, Gronk is starting this week for sure. Yeah, this I mean, he's probably going to be a top five tight end this week. Falcons are pretty good at allowing mm -hmm. fantasy points to almost every position. <laughs> so we'll move on to the uh, Falcons then with Matt Ryan. Uh, there's this other podcast I listen to, and they have this rule. It's called... Uh, Don't ever start Matt Ryan. No, it's called Rulio 11. If Julio Jones is out, you're not playing Matt Ryan. He benched his ass. I'm, I'm really hoping nobody's been playing him these past few weeks because he's been terrible, and I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. He yeah, looks a little washed. This matchup is not the greatest either for him. So uh, that's enough about him then. <laughs> we, will <laughs> we will move on to an even more relevant position in this offense. Todd Gurley and the running backs. Can you start Todd Gurley this week? The only one I'm starting from Atlanta is Calvin Ridley. Yes. I got him. <laughs> and even then, he might... Man, it's really hard to say for him to have a bad game because he's just been doing insane. But this could be a game where he struggles. I think Can't I believe I heard... He's in on him... Especially with Carlton Davis and all that, Murphy bunting, I don't know, it's going to be tough. 
Yeah, I heard uh, a rumor that Carlton Davis is going to be on him. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, this is the first time they've matched up all year. I'm curious to see how this goes. Yeah, they play two and two, twice in three weeks. Play again I, in a couple weeks. Hopefully he can uh, have a good showing for f- people who have him in the fantasy playoffs. Uh, I mean, this is a tough matchup, but sometimes you get a good enough receiver and a good enough offense. Well, an average enough offense in the Falcons. And they can turn out decent fantasy value for you. But uh, one guy that's, I mean, I don't want to just skip over the other receivers, but like you said, with a tough matchup, are, are you trusting Russell Gage to throw him in a lineup this nope. week? I didn't think so. I'm not either. And I ain't trusting Laquan Treadwell. And I'm definitely uh, not trusting Hayden Hurst. That was going to be my next question. Do you roll out Hayden Hurst this nope. week? Nope. Way too inconsistent, not seeing enough targets, and honestly, he's just laying a goose egg. Like two, what was it, three weeks ago? Not a fan. I mean, he, he's got 10 targets in the red zone this year, so, I mean, Matt Ryan likes looking his way in the red like zone. I feel like that was only at the start of the year, though. It could be true. I mean, he's it's 17% of the targets. I mean, that's third highest on the team behind only Ridley and Russell Gage right now, believe it or not. Julio's not even in that conversation. Well, yeah, that's because they had all the games he missed too he still got eight targets though so he's two behind Hayden Hurst so I, I do see what you're saying I mean I think you could play him this week I don't trust him though it's just I don't trust any tight ends though so it's hard to they re... nah I'm gonna change my mind I wouldn't play Hayden Hurst <laughs> he's bad man. So... he's not very good well, remember also earlier in the year I said without Julio, for some reason, Hayden Hurst also struggles. Yeah. I don't, don't know, know why. That. Don't know why. So, we'll move on to the next game here. We got the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars at the Baltimore Ravens. It is the return of Gardner Minshew. He's going to be starting this week. So, I feel like this is going to be an easy game. You obviously start James Robinson. You can't trust Gardner Minshew. You can't trust Marquise or uh, DJ Chark anymore because he's been terrible. So, I mean, you aren't really starting anybody from the Jaguars unless his name's James Robinson. So, that's pretty easy. And from the Ravens, you're obviously starting Lamar Jackson. Right? Yeah, I mean, I would almost... I would almost maybe even uh, think about starting J.K. Dobbins with his week last week. He got 61% of the snap share, 13 attempts. He got the touchdown. He made he, my start article, actually. It's just that. It's, man. It's a, I, I know. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a tough backfield to decipher. It's just a good matchup, and you know one of them is going to hit. And if it's not him, it's going to be Lamar Jackson. Gus Bus, man. Uh, the one thing I will add, and because I, I do agree with you on pretty much everything about the Jaguars, you're only really starting James Robinson. And I'll be honest, I don't even know if I trust James Robinson in this particular matchup, but you're playing him. Yeah. Uh, I will say, with Gardner Minshew starting, there is a little hope for DJ Chark owners because, I mean, you're not having Mike Glennon throwing the ball, and it was – Minshew, who oh, made I DJ. About that, but they're playing the Ravens, so. You no, you're right. You're, I'm I'm talking maybe like in the in the next two weeks when you get a better matchup, not necessarily the Ravens, but yeah, you. I mean, you got hope. That's all I'm saying. Hope in a in a in a very lost season of COVID. But uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, are you starting Marquise Brown though? No. Actually, he's on the COVID list right now. Yeah, so I don't want anything to do with those receivers except Mark Andrews. It's going to be probably a very run-oriented game plan. Yeah, it's going to be a Mark Andrews week. Considering Derrick Henry just torched Jacksonville. Yeah, that was fun to watch. (laughs) Hopefully J.K. can do it this week. That'd be dope. All right, so we'll recap that. You're starting James Robinson comfortably, and that is the only one (laughs) on the Jaguars we're starting this week. (laughs) You're playing Lamar Jackson after life last week. Finally brought in him. And then I would say... Because he ran the ball. What did he do? Throw the ball 12 times? He didn't even reach 200 yards, I don't think. So, it's annoying. Yeah, his his rush basing flo- run uh, base floor is just insane. Can but I would go out on a stretch and say you could probably put J.K. Dobbins in the flex position this week, barring the matchup.
Would you agree? What? Uh, playing J.K. Dobbins in the flex this week you can with the matchup. You as RB2, probably. Yeah, Just but be risky. I mean, yeah, it'd be risky, but I mean... He had the volume last week. He's not going to get the full run, uh, workload of a running back. He just but does, he's, for some reason, he's not getting targets in the pass game anymore. Granted, no. Lamar Jackson can't throw the ball, so. <laughs> You'd think he'd be able to throw it five yards, but yeah. So, starting James Robinson, J.K. Dobbins, and Lamar Jackson, and Mark Andrews. Can't forget about that big man. So, yeah. we'll move on. <laughs> we'll move on to this next game. San Francisco 49ers at the Dallas Cowboys. This one will not be fun to watch, and I probably won't watch it. But news was Nick Mullins is going to start against this team. Uh, if you're feeling ballsy, go for it. It's a great matchup, but you got to be ballsy, man, if you want to start Nick Mullins. He's not been that great. Nah, I would not be doing that. Yep, I mean, like I said, ballsy just because of the matchup. That's it. Uh, Raheem Mostert. News is he is set to play this Sunday after his ankle uh, injury this past week. I can't. You can't trust that. He, been, he hasn't even been great this year anyways when he's been healthy. Yeah, but it's the Cowboys. He's they can't tackle anybody. The conference game against the Packers and it's working, I guess, still. <laughs> All right, then uh, who would you rather start out of this backfield, Mostert or Jeff Wilson? Can I go with neither? You got to choose one because think about this. This is the 49ers offense. They do have a very run-heavy team. And we're talking about the Cowboys who cannot stop the run this year. So I, I'm going to go Jeff Wilson. It seems like I, would Jeff actually, Wilson game. I would actually lean that way with you as well. I mean, they're the way they've seen Mostert play this year, he has been injury-prone. Why just throw him into a full workload? Right. I so I agree. If if you're gonna start anybody from this backfield, I'd probably make it Jeff Wilson. Uh, I just don't trust Mostert this week. Kind of like people trusted Keenan Allen this week. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it is a shame. But uh, Debo Samuel news is he's out for the rest of the year, which leaves rookie Brandon Ayuk as the number one option in this receiving game. Also, with George Kittle still out. You're starting Ayuk. He's been absolutely insane. He's had double-digit targets the past, what, three, four games? Yeah, he actually had a uh, career-high 16, 16 turn yeah. and a career-high 10 catches. Yep. And that was against a tough uh, matchup in the Washington uh, football team defense. This is against the Dallas Cowboys, so he could, he could very well repeat that performance. Maybe on less receptions, though. <laughs> I, I'm playing him in FanDuel because he's still cheap. How do you feel about Kendrick Bourne, or is Ayuk the only one that's startable out of this passing? Like is how about Jordan? Playoffs, I'm not trusting it. You, how about Jordan Reed in the tight end position, knowing how much tight ends valued in this offense? Got five targets last week. He only caught two of them. He's got four straight weeks of at least four targets. I He's got one touchdown. Someone better, to be honest. If you can't... I like Hayden Hurst more than him this week, actually. So yeah, if you Dallas... have to choose between Hayden Hurst and Jordan Reed, I'd, I'd probably say Hurst, unfortunately. I'd go Hurst, too, just because Julio's out. I know I, I know that doesn't correlate with my argument earlier, but it just there's targets on the table. It's got to go to somebody. So we'll move on to uh, Andy Dalton for the Cowboys. Uh-uh. Wrong. Uh-uh. Don't do it. No, no, I haven't. I would. I hope you not started him once this year, guys. Um, Ezekiel Elliott, though, it's kind of a plummet at the end of the season here. Can you trust him against this defense to maybe find the end zone? No. Obviously, obviously, you got to play him. Who? Zeke. No, no, you're not. I mean. You think there's better options out there in a very limited running back? He, first off, he's a he's questionable, which is he is projected to play. I he still, is, but yeah, I, I I know he's still able to play, but he's been so bad. Again, I've been rooting for him for most of the year. I said he's gonna figure it out. He hasn't, 
and I don't think he's scored a touchdown since week nine, maybe even six. I just don't like him. 11. Week 11 was his last touchdown against Minnesota. What was his one before that? <laughs> First week of the season. Actually, that is... Nope, I... No, the yeah. last touchdown was Minnesota. It was a receiving touchdown. The yeah. one before that last rushing was two, touchdown. two rushing touchdowns, week five against the Giants. And he's not getting his usual 20 carries, so you're not getting the volume anymore. He's not. He's getting some targets, yes, but... Five man, straight if weeks. If you're starting him, it's risky at flex at best. Five straight weeks of in the 60% for the snap count. That's yeah, just not him. going lower, too. Tony Pollard ex- exists. Yeah, it seems like Tony Pollard's kind of taking away his targets, too. If you're playing Zeke to hope for, like, a 20-point game, not happening. Sorry, guys. Nope, not happening. But uh, someone who could actually maybe get you a 20-point week because he's uh, been on fire uh, the last three weeks is Amari Cooper. Him and Andy Dalton are finally getting on page together. Uh, you're starting him this yeah. week. Are you are you confident he can reach that twenty mark? Not confident, he's got, but you gotta start him, so you're hoping. He's got best. he's got three straight games with a touchdown, three straight games with at least four catches. He's got twenty two targets in the last three games. He's only scored under double digits twice. You're starting this guy no matter what, even with a terrible quarterback. Yeah, I mean start him especially now that he's finally gotten that uh connection with andy dalton cd lamb though and michael gallup uh it was f- it was fun while it lasted in the beginning of the year but no, it wasn't <laughs> michael the... gallup was so frustrating at the beginning of the year cd lamb was cool because dak liked him but michael gallup is on my shit list right now yeah he's only got one game over 100 <laughs> receiving yards this year uh, it's just so erratic he's got only one touchdown on the year he's it's not that he's bad. It's just he's, the way he's being used in this offense. He's it's a shame. He's strictly the deep ball guy. Yeah, it's a damn shame. But C.D. Lamb, good things to come in the future whenever uh, Dak Prescott comes back. But until then, I don't. I don't feel confident in Lamb. I only feel confident in Amari Cooper in this passing offense. And really, to be honest with you, this entire offense. Yeah, you're not playing a tight end in this offense either. So don't even worry nope. about that. No, not unless you're you're desperate as hell. You're not playing Dalton Schultz or Jordan Reed in this matchup. So we will move on to the next game. We got the Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts. Deshaun um, almost made my sit list this week. He came real close. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's been bad lately. But I, I still, I, it's really hard to put him on that list because he's he can. Do so much. Last time he played this game, uh, play, bleh, played the Colts three weeks ago. He was 26 for 38, 341 yards, one rushing touchdown, and, uh, oh, and and a passing touchdown. No, no, he didn't have a pass. Oh yeah, he didn't have one. That was an interception. Yeah. My bad. Still though, he got the yards for you, just not the touchdowns. That's unfortunate. I mean, only but, 20 fantasy points, so it's not like it's great. Yeah, this uh, has definitely been a tough stretch of games for him playing the Colts, Bears, Colts. <laughs> not easy. But, yeah, I mean, you're starting him. I just, you're not very confident in him. David Johnson. He's off the uh, COVID list, practiced in full on Thursday. It's looking like he's going to play this week. I wouldn't do it. There was, uh, I seen something about DeForest Buckner poss- possibly being out and... The last time DeForest Buckner was out, this defense allowed 200 rushing yards by none other than Derrick Henry. Uh, do you do you like him a little bit more if uh-uh. Buckner's that out? Didn't, that didn't sway my decision at all because Derrick Henry is a massive beast. David Johnson has, has back issues, man. He can't even run anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm i trying to give hope. <laughs> So, find better option than David Johnson this week. Unless you're starting him, you're hoping he gets PPR work. But, Brandon Cooks. Yeah, you just got Frank Stilato's money. 
<laughs> Brandon Cooks so is uh <laughs> Brandon Cooks is cleared to play in week fifteen. <laughs> he practiced fully on Friday from his neck uh issue or we're throwing him in our lineups this week, right? I had no idea what you just said. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're fine. Brandon Cooks. He uh he's cleared to play this week. We're throwing him in our lineups. Yeah, he did all right. Obviously, he's going to get the targets now that Will Fuller is out. So if you're a volume chaser, play him. Yep, and then uh, Kiki Kunte no. bursting out. Oh, uh, man. His name, right? Kuti. Kuti. Kiki Kuti. Kiki Kuti. I said it right. <laughs> <laughs> and I would actually have to disagree with you. I would be playing what? him against the... You know, uh, he's had three, three, three one hundred yard receiving games in his career. Were they all against Indianapolis? Hey, that's a good guess. That's pretty funny. Yeah, he uh, he seems to do his best against the Colts. And you know what? Last time they played two weeks ago, he reached that hundred yard mark with one hundred forty one yards on eight eight receptions. Yeah. So I'm gonna have. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Kiki Kunti. Kuti. I can't say his name correctly. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Chad Hansen, I mean, I don't trust him. I mean, you guys can if you want, but I don't. <laughs> but Philip Rivers. advice there. I don't <laughs> trust him. If you guys do, go for it. Obviously, they don't trust me if they trust him. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Rivers has a great matchup against the Houston Texans. Bradley Roby's out for the year, and I can't name another one of their cornerbacks. T.Y. Hilton's finally catching fire. I think Phillip Rivers is startable this week if you're looking for a streamer. Yeah, he's been startable lately, at least. <laughs> I love how we describe him. Just startable. Not great. Startable. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's had uh, three straight games now of 240-plus passing yards. He's got three straight games, f two touchdowns. I mean, Honestly, he's got a, so he's got a solid really floor. All I know about this is if, we want, if we're saying we're going to play Jonathan Taylor or not. Hell yeah, we're playing and Jonathan Taylor. And it's most certainly a yes. Because I don't know what Frank Reich, what snapped in his head or something to where he's now given him – a lot of the carries, but man, he is producing now. Yeah, since uh, three straight we can... games of ninety plus yards, one game with one hundred and fifty, two games with twenty plus carries in the past three, all fifteen plus fantasy points. It's insane. He's still under sixty percent snap share, though. That's the thing that scares me with him. But even, I mean, even last week he had fifty fifty eight percent of the snap share, and he still got twenty carries. So, I mean. It seems like when he is on the field, they are giving him the you, ball. You won't it... see him reach 70, 80% snap because he's not used in the passing game as much, and they really like Naeem Hines, so that's why you won't see that. But I don't think you're going to see Naeem Hines out-snap Jonathan Taylor for the rest of the year. I hope so. I really do, because he's finally coming into form as everybody's drafted him as. Yeah, but, uh, if you made the playoffs and you drafted him, you're reaping the benefits now. That was a good little uh, transition you had there into Naheem Hines, though. Like, uh, I mean, along with Taylor, I think we're starting Hines this week. Would you agree? Flex he's got a great matchup. Risky flex to me. Uh, he's going to have the game script playing against him because I do not see the Texans having a lead in this game. It would have to be a shutout. Or, shutout. <laughs> it would have to be a shootout for Naeem Hines to get a lot of work, I feel like. But, man, I mean, look at this, though. He's getting 10-plus fantasy points, and he's only getting three three targets, four targets the past two games. Uh, he's only getting... Plus yards. Interesting. Uh, he's only gotten 10 carries twice on the year. He's not getting involved that much on the run game. But, yes, he is the pass-catching back for sure. I mean, he's got... Excuse me, 17 ca uh, seventeen targets in the past three games, and you love to see that. That's because 10 against Tennessee in, the, in an absolute shootout. Oh, you had to go and ruin my stat. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I'd say he's a flex option this week. Remember when Jordan Wilkins was a thing? 
Yeah, for one week. <laughs> it was. We'll I move... just looked at it. <laughs> we'll move on to uh, T.Y. Hilton, who is on a tear these past three weeks, and what a time to finally come to life in your fantasy playoffs. Well, I know it's weird. Since he's Most... been doing good, his snap share has gone down. So maybe him playing less is, like, helping him have energy for these other plays, you know what I mean? I think it's just another dumb Frank Reich thing. <laughs> no, because look, the, before bye, he's playing 94, 95, 76, 80, and he's scoring under 10 fantasy points every time. He wasn't ca- uh, catching the ball at all. Yeah, he might be being used more of a situational guy now. But he's making an account now because he's got 23 targets in the past three games. 17 catches, over 200 receiving yards, and he has four touchdowns in this three-game stretch. He gets another prime matchup against Houston, who he kills in his career, just like Kiki Kuti kills Kuti. the Colts. <laughs> so we're playing T.Y. Hilton. Michael Pittman Jr., though. Is he, uh, you don't like him in this one? No. Nah. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of it either. Uh very run oriented for the Colts and if it's not it's going to T.Y. Hilton it's very weird how this offense runs because like you said with the snap count going down with T.Y. Hilton him getting more involved well the snap count has (laughs) gotten way up there and he's getting less involved so it's like super I don't know yeah it's weird but uh because of that I only really like T.Y. Hilton I don't trust Pittman I don't trust Pascal and the tight ends. Don't play one this week. I mean, Mo Alley Cox is questionable. Trey Burton, he's uh fell back to earth. Yeah, he's definitely fell back to earth. See, the thing is, is I I seen two of them possibly be injured, but it only looks like Mo Alley Cox is going to be injured, just so I last would avoid. Week, Jack Doyle had the most snaps out of all of them, so who knows what ones get oh, yeah. the most snaps. I would only be playing a, a tight end in this offense if there's injuries to sure. two of the others, yep. maybe one. But that's it for this game. So we will move on to the next one. We got the New England Patriots at the Miami Dolphins. This is going to be a fun one. I'm curious to see how Tua does against the Bill Belichick offense. There goes Beasley. It might be rough. Yeah, I, after what Bill Belichick did to uh, Justin Herbert... <laughs> Giving him that wampin. I mean, Bill Belichick just has rookies numbers. So, I mean, Cam Newton, no. Don't start him. Mm-hmm. I don't know why you've been starting him. If you have been starting him, he has been terrible this year. So, we'll move on to the running back. Damian Harris, news is he's going to be out for this game. So, that means we got James White leading the role as the... Is he questionable mm-hmm. also? Uh, let me read this real quick. Questionable for game. Yep. 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 And if he's out for the game, then we'll have Sony Michelle leading the crew. <laughs> oh, man. If that's your case, are you playing Sony Michelle if James White's out? No, not against Miami. Not with all the volume this offense entails to the run game? We've seen Sony Michelle play before. We're definitely looking at a 20 carries for 50 yards and maybe a touchdown. I can't agree more. <laughs> So we'll move on to the wide receivers who are pretty much irrelevant in this offense. Jacoby Myers, Demir Bird, and Nikhil Harry. I'm not starting any of them with this. Trying to figure out who's going to be the beneficiary this week. Usually it's been Jacoby Myers. Demir Bird pops in there every now and again. But against this offense and this secondary with the Dolphins, I ain't starting any of them. Mm -mm. You can find better options elsewhere. Yes, sir. And the tight end, Dalton Keene. Nope. So, so we'll move on to Tua. I don't know if people have been playing him this year. Uh, he probably had, he probably been all right for you. Last but this is probably would have been good for you. But this is one of those games where you want to sit him. Just like we were talking about, Bill Belichick has rookies numbers, and I predict that Tua is going to have a rough game. I still think the Dolphins will win, but Tua is going to have a rough game. Salman Ahmed. Question. I think it's. I don't even think I said his name right, to be honest. But he is... (laughs) Yeah, you said it right. He is questionable, though. Um, If he is starting, though, 
Do we like him? I like uh, Lynn Bowden more. I do like Lynn Ooh, Bowden be uh, because he's a he's a cheater at the running back <laughs> position. He plays slot all the time, yes. so he's got a lot of a lot of potential sneaky in catching flex the ball. Play right there. It is a sneaky flex play, but the Patriots are giving up rushing yards to the running back this year. I mean, look what Cam Akers did to him last year. Got twenty nine. I mean, last week got twenty nine carries for one hundred and seventy one yards. So, I mean, I think the running back here has some value if we can find who it is. Uh, I mean, I, if Salman Ahmed plays... If he's, not, Sal if he's not playing, you guys really going to trust DeAndre Washington, Washington again? No. Going to trust Patrick Laird? No. I trust Washington... No, you don't. Please don't tell me that. Maybe to find the end zone, that's it. But I don't trust him to get he's any yards. two chances to be... To step up, he's had 13 carries both of those games, one for 49 yards and one for 35 yards. Not good. yeah. The, well, the the reason why I I can't see Laird doing it because he's the pass catching back for him. I can't see you know any what I mean? of these guys doing it. Hopefully, they give the ball to Lynn Bowden. I think it's safe to say if it's Salvin Ahmed, just play Salvin Ahmed. <laughs> Lynn Bowden, great play, and then Devonte Parker. Questionable. He he is questionable. Uh, it's looking like he is trending to play, but keep an eye on him because if he is out, then yeah, even more reason to play Lynn Bolden. Yes. And then you're playing. Uh... Are you gonna say Jacecki? No, he's questionable. He is I questionable. I, see, when I was doing my injury thing, I thought his injury was way worse than it is. Turns out he's actually. Yeah, it looked worse, but he was... Like, he freaked uh, out, man. I thought it was good for it. I thought it broke. He, he was at practice, but, uh, I mean, if he is playing, if he is playing, you're playing him. He's got four touchdowns in the last three games. Be risky, he's, man. He's got 22 targets. He's got six, 17 catches, over 150 yards. I mean, and the tight end position being so barren. He's just involved in this offense. But that's about it for the Dolphins, then. We'll move on to your game, Mike, here. We got the Chicago Bears mm. at, at the Minnesota Vikings. Bears going to get some revenge on the Vikings? Hopefully. Yeah, we can only hope so. But this time they got Mitch Trubisky starting. Mitch Trubisky. I miss saying his name. Mitch Trubisky. I would not be playing him. <laughs> I mean, this is a good matchup against the Vikings. They have been playing better as of late. Uh, Can't Mitch, trust him. He is coming off a good game with three touchdowns, 267 yards against Houston. That is Houston, though. But I do agree. I, he had a great game last week, but I don't trust him. There's only two I trust in this offense, and that's Dave Montgomery now for some reason, which is weird to say, and Allen Robinson. And I'll be 100% honest with you. I don't even trust David Montgomery. 80-yard run for <laughs> him on the first play. And he ends with 11 carries. And they had the lead the whole time. What is going on, Matt Nagy? That's Matt Nagy for you. It doesn't make any sense. Since the bye but... for Dave Montgomery, though, three straight 24-plus fantasy point games. Yeah, the matchups have been indicative of his uh, fantasy output because he has been on fire these last three weeks against Green Bay, Detroit, and Houston and gets another solid matchup against a soft Minnesota defense. So you're plugging in David Montgomery for another smash week, hopefully. And like you said, Allen Robinson, he's on fire just as well, just as much with Mitch Trubisky back in the lineup. 13 targets last week, nine receptions, 123 yards, and another touchdown. He's got three in the past three games. Smash him, play him, whatever you want to say, you're putting him in. Uh, but Darnell Mooney, without Nick Foles in the lineup, I mean... He has seen a downtick in usage, but he found the end zone last week. Do we trust him to maybe find the end zone again this week? Nope. nope don't trust him at all. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Miller? Nope. I don't trust him at all either. He only got targeted twice last week. Not any good. Cole Komet, though. Finally uh, getting all these targets. You uh, know this. Back-to-back -back games with seven targets. Back-to-back -back games, four catches, uh, 30 plus yards he's got a touchdown in the in the last two games as well he might be okay for you but man it's gonna be a risky play if you want to start him yeah if i think if you're starting to tight end out of the bears offense now it's probably cole Komet over jimmy graham jimmy graham's too tight end 
or bust. Plus, he's questionable. So we'll move on to Kirk Cousins. Sit him. The Bears defense is good. I know it's 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 given up some points as of late. I don't trust it. If if there's anyone I trust in this offense, it'll probably be Dalvin Cook. Thielen, I trust. You trust Thielen? I trust Irv Smith as long as Kyle Rudolph is out. Kyle Rudolph is ruled out, so I would be I would be throwing out Irv Smith again in your lineup. Bears struggle against tight ends. Yes, they do, and they would have given up another bad week to tight ends if Jordan Aikens didn't have the sun in his face last week. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're starting Cook, you're starting Thielen, you starting Jefferson in this matchup. He's uh, he's been really good this year. Last time when he played Chicago, he had 10 targets, 8 receptions for 135 yards. Oh, yeah, you're starting him. There's no way you could take him out of your lineup. Yeah, so I think there's only four people from this side. Uh, matchup proof, man. Four people from this side that you're starting, and three of them are matchup proof at this point. The three that are matchup proof are Cook, Thielen, and Jefferson, and then you're playing Irv Smith since Rudolph is out again. That was a quick one. We'll move on to the next one. <laughs> we'll move on to the next one. Detroit Lions at the Tennessee Titans. We have good news for fantasy football players. Matthew Stafford is trending towards playing, even though he has a rib injury. What a trooper. And boy, do we need him. Do because, we well, I mean, we need him more no, than Chase really Daniel. Chicago Bears. <laughs> I think fantasy players need him in this game because uh, they got players like DeAndre Swift, Marvin Jones, TJ Hawkinson, and I don't think Chase Daniel would have helped that. <laughs> You're correct. <clears throat> so, although Matthew Stafford is playing in this game, I don't trust him enough to start him with this injury because he could take one hit and then just decide to sit out. The Lions aren't playing for anything right now, I don't believe. So, we'll move on to the running back in DeAndre Swift. We're starting him. Yeah. Great matchup against the Titans. Gets involved in the passing game. He's uh, finally being used as that uh, as that three-down role when he's healthy. Future note to self, do you want to draft a rookie running back? <laughs> Probably wait till after one of their buys. Because that way they could get integrated into the system more. Uh, my like if only... you drafted DeAndre Swift thinking he was going to start at the start of the year, like a lot of people did, you were probably very wrong. But now, if you draft him and you you hung on to him, you are reaping the benefits now for sure. I was just going to say the only hole in that logic is you can't draft now. No, I was saying that. <laughs> yep, no, I got like what you're JK saying. J.K. Dobbins, I drafted him everywhere, but I pretty much waited all year for him to finally start, and it took – Eight to ten weeks, pretty much. I know it's kind of the same with Cam Akers too. I mean, Cam Akers, did... Jonathan Taylor. Like you said, the only Dobbins ones they went... really didn't do that to is Clyde, and he's just been. They did it backwards for him. They threw him out there right away into the fire. Then they got a guy to to make him less integrated into the offense. So it's weird. Well, he was also hit with that COVID too, so that could have been an True. issue as well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that was a good little note to self for the future on, on running backs. <laughs> Who's going to get some good ones next year? We'll move on to the wide receivers. Uh, Marvin Jones, Kenny Galladay is ruled out again. Oh, are we rolling out Marvin Jones in this beautiful matchup again? Reluctantly, sure. Why not? He has an astounding 32 targets. In the last three games, like 12, 12, and 8. I just noticed that. That's kind of stupid. Yeah, we're playing him. Danny Amendola, I do not trust, though. And same with Quentin Cephas. Muhammad Sanu, also. I don't trust any of those guys. The only other one I would trust is TJ Hawkinson for you guys. Yeah. Right, Ike? Mm hmm. So we'll move on to the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Ryan Tannehill. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah, you're starting him in this good matchup. It just sucks because every now and again you do get those Derrick Henry games, and he doesn't have to throw as much. Uh, actually, this could be a very this. We could see Derrick Henry rush for two thirty again this game. So I don't know about Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, I mean, that's why I like Matthew Stafford, because Stafford in the game, he can be able to stay with him. It's possible that Tannehill will have to throw more if that's the case. Um, yeah. So we'll move on to Derrick Henry. You're starting the Yeti. He's a, he's a Sasquatch. He's good. He's the abominable snowman. He's every mythical creature wrapped into one because nobody could tackle him. But... Uh, then we'll move on to the wide receiver. A.J. Brown, he's good to go this week. You're starting him. Corey Davis, though. I mean, he's now put himself in wide receiver three, wide receiver two territory. Wouldn't you agree? He's yeah, he had actually a, been pretty solid this year. He's had a, he had a rough game last week against Jacksonville. Only three catches for That's, 33 again, yards. because... Derrick Henry. Henry dominated and the only reason and Brown had so many points because he had that touchdown. Yeah, so there's no need to use him. Uh, if So if Detroit can stay in this game, I can see Corey Davis and A.J. Brown having value. I just don't see Detroit staying in this game. Detroit, the most I see Detroit scoring is probably yeah, 24 points maybe, 21. Yeah, and uh, the Titans are averaging 28 points this year I mean so they're they at least get four touchdowns a game so I didn't I'm assuming I, Tannehill will probably throw a touchdown but it just I don't know I that's just one touchdown I don't know what he'll do with the rest he'll probably throw one stupid one to Johnny Smith because that's the only thing making him relevant now <laughs> yeah, he's just he is just gone down in involvement in this offense. It only had 62% of the snap share last week. Yeah, I don't I don't trust any uh, guys in this receiving core besides Corey Davis and A.J. Brown, and that's if they don't run all over them. So we'll move on to our next game, the Seattle Seahawks at the Washington football team. I'm going to have a lot of fun watching Russell Wilson run for his life. <laughs> yes, he is. Do you think Chase Young gets to him? Uh, probably at least once. Hopefully he don't fumble. Oh, he will. <laughs> <laughs> but you're starting Russell Wilson. I know he's had a rough go at it the past couple weeks, but you're starting him. You have to. He had four touchdowns last week. I mean, that's hope that he's found his way back. <coughs> But uh, Chris Carson, he's supposed to play this game. You playing him against this tough uh, run defense? I mean, obviously you're playing him, but do you trust him? Uh, enough to play him, yeah. You have to. Go for the best. I think there's a difference between having to play somebody and trusting to play somebody. I have to play Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. That is not fun. Don't trust him. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, if there is an injury to Chris Carson because he is injury prone, make sure you have Carlos Hyde. Lock him up because he is definitely going to – the running back in this offense has a lot of value. But another uh, position in this offense with a lot of value is the wide receivers. Metcalf, lock it. You're starting both of them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you feel more uh, trustworthy in Metcalf because Lockett has been probably the most erratic wide receiver this year. He probably has, yeah, for being a top wide receiver. I mean, it's, it's so inconsistent. He's got He had five targets last week, only five catches for 52 yards. Week before that, six catches for 63 yards. Week before that, three catches for 23. Like... <sighs> He hasn't, he hasn't scored a touchdown since week 11 against Arizona. What can you say? I mean, DK is better, man. He's getting or DK, targets. DK is just more involved, maybe. Because it's always <laughs> open. That's fair. It's hard to guard a giant. Yeah. But you're starting both of them. DJ Moore, I would sit if you guys have been playing David him. And, 
Yep, I don't know why I said DJ Moore. But I would be setting him this in this matchup. Along with the tight ends, Hollister and Disley. I don't trust either of them in this one. Disley scored last week, but I don't trust either. I know you don't either. Uh-uh. All right, we'll move on to the football team. Alex Smith was officially ruled out, which means Dwayne Haskins is back in the starting position. Because of that, we are downgrading this offense. Except for D.D. McKissick. Even though they're playing a great matchup in the Seahawks. Antonio Gibson. D.D. McKissick time. Yep, and Antonio Gibson is ruled out for yet another game. So Peyton Barber and McKissick will be the featured backs, plural, because they don't use just one. Uh, McLaurin, he's finally getting his buddy back who made him so relevant early in the season. Uh, you think you can see a bounce back week for him against this Seattle's defense? Unlikely. I don't like Dwayne Haskins. Uh, now that Seattle's apparently got a pass rush, it's going to make him be very scared in that pocket. So, like I said, it could be a heavy dose of J.D. McKissick. Uh, I don't I don't really trust him either. You like the matchup and you have to play him, so there's at least right. some optimism there. But, yeah, uh, other than McLaurin, the only other person I'd be playing is McKissick, and I'm actually a little skeptical on Logan Thomas now that Alex Smith is out because that's who was giving him all these targets. Right. He had 16 targets the past two games with Smith, uh, 15 receptions. He had two touchdowns the last three games. Uh I'd bench him this week with Haskins playing. I just you can't trust it. So we'll move on to our next game, the first one of the 3 o'clock games. Philadelphia Eagles at the Arizona Cardinals. Jalen Hurts, Ike. Started how about, how about it? Coming out. I, I'm sure everybody knew this. The Saints had a, a record of like 50-something plus games of not allowing an 100-yard rusher. Well, when the Eagles played him last week, they allowed two 100-yard rushers, Miles Sanders and Jalen Hurts. So, going to what you said uh, earlier, you're starting Jalen Hurts. Yep. I, I like him. Me too. His rushing floor is really nice. Yes, and the Cardinals' defense is not great. So, with that being said, the other 100-yard rusher, Miles Sanders, can we trust him in this matchup to be good again? Yeah. I like him. Can't think take you can him have out of your lineup, but yeah. No, no, you think you can have another hundred yard week though, like last uh, week? Unlikely. You could probably get you eighty yards. He he should be able to get you twelve fantasy points, hopefully. Yeah, he'll probably get in the end zone too. The way the the Eagles move the ball with Hurts at quarterback now, they just seem revamped. Don't be surprised if Jalen Hurts steals those though, those touchdowns. Yeah, I will not be surprised whatsoever. Uh, but with Hurts being the quarterback now, the wide receivers have taken a hit. They're really... Uh, no, I wouldn't they, start any of them. Yeah, I, I wouldn't look to start any receivers, honestly, in this offense, but I would be willing to start Dallas Goddard. Yeah, don't be th- don't be thinking about starting Zach Ertz. Yeah, I don't know. I, th- I think it's because Zach Ertz is on a contract year, and he's just... They're clearly not going to pay him. Yeah, and it's just... It sucks. Zach Ertz must have been Carson Wentz guy, but Dallas Goddard, he's definitely shown up onto the scene. He has, wow, three straight games of six-plus targets. I mean, he's just involved in this offense more good than the wide receivers. End, what? Come again? It's good for a tight end. Oh, yes, very good for a tight end. Any tight end with seven targets in an offense is good. Potential for reaching that 10-point threshold. <laughs> Kyler Murray for the Cardinals. Uh, Struggling as of late. He's had some tougher matchups down the stretch for everybody who has him. The Eagles, though, they have a good run defense, not a great pass defense. And I've seen that Darius Slay would not be making the trip to Arizona to play with them. So they are down their number one cornerback. Do we think Kyler Murray is a good play this week? I just gave you ever... I gave you every reason to say yes, Ike, and you still didn't say yes. Nope. He's borderline. <sighs> Something's wrong with his shoulder or something. 
But I mean, he he ran it 13 times last week. His legs are fine. I mean, that was his, that was one of his problems as his rushing floor finally went down with that injury. But now he find, he's running again. I think he's a QB one this yeah, week. But next three games are rough. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking forward to when he plays the Rams. Kenyon Drake, kind of bursting on the scene now. A little late, but four games with a touchdown. He's got uh, four. St- the last four games with a touchdown. You're definitely starting him. RB2 yeah. for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's weird though. I mean, I, I just noticed this. He, he's He's been on a very low snap count. Only 54% last week, and the week before that was 45. But yeah, you're starting him. He's getting every, every rushing attempt possible. He's even getting a few catches in there. But... With the news of Darius Slay not making the trip, does that make you feel even more confident in DeAndre Hopkins? Uh, I mean, he's obviously going to get his, so I'm feeling confident about DeAndre Hopkins every week. I think this could be one of those weeks that Hopkins has wide receiver one potential where he is the number one guy. On the week. He's almost number one. He's had 24 targets the past two games. He's doing just fine. Only one touchdown, though. Yeah, he's not going to score every game. No, but, I mean, he's only got... Five on the year. Five on the year, and that's something... That's not like him. Yeah. Last year, he had three, four, six... Okay, seven. <laughs> <laughs> three, four, six... But then 2018, he had two, three, four, six, seven, yeah, and 11. So I don't, I don't know. That's just me. He is getting the PPR value, though, so he's guaranteed almost like eight catches a game. Christian Kirk, do we trust him in this playoff week? Fuck no. I mean, no. <laughs> no, I'd have to agree with you. Fuck no is a, a correct response. He's had five straight games of under 10 points. Yeah, he seems to be their uh, their deep threat now, because he's either getting a hundred yards or he's getting ten. Oh man, Dan Arnold, I didn't think I'd be saying him his, his name, but I mean, two weeks, three touchdowns they, they now. They hurt your feelings, but you can't trust him. I don't care how good he does, you can't trust him. <laughs> You don't like his red zone uh, percentage of getting targets in the red zone? He's only gotten... He, he, gets, he, only, he gets four <laughs> targets a game. <laughs> he only has he only has four catches in the past two games, but three touchdowns. In week 11, he has four touchdowns, but only six catches. <laughs> he's a touchdown machine, man. Maybe he's the Tyler Higbee don't this play year. Him. I'm sorry, guys. Don't play him. I'm sorry if I just hurt your feelings, but no. <laughs> No, you did not hurt my feelings. I just wanted to make the name be known because Dan Arnold is getting touchdowns right now. Dan the but man. Dan the man. He's better than Max Williams, I'll tell you that. Ugh. But that's enough for this game then because, I mean, that's actually a lot less Cardinals players than I thought we would be putting in there. I mean, do we, do we even mention Chase Edmonds? I mean, eh. He's game-time decision. I'd be, I'd be benching him if he's game-time decision. Right. So we'll move on to our next game. This one's going to be a blowout if I've ever seen one. We got the New York Jets at the L.A. Rams. Don't start anybody on the Jets. I agree. Not a, not a damn soul. This is the number one ranked defense as of right now in the league. All right. That's enough about the Jets. <laughs> Jared Goff, though. The Jets... I believe it, I've seen it was five straight weeks now have allowed a QB one finish. Do we trust Jared Goff to continue that trend? Uh, no. Uh, I <laughs> can't trust him to do it, but he probably will. I mean, he's got Robert Woods. He's got Cooper Cup, Josh Reynolds. Uh, I think he. I think he does, honestly. I hate to say it, but I think he does. But uh, the the surprise in this offense, the person who got so much rushing volume last week in what Sean McVay likes to call a Kyle Shanahan offense, 
Cam Akers. Talked a little bit about him earlier. 29 rushes for 171 yards, no touchdowns. Even had two receptions for 23 yards. I've been hearing a lot lately that he could be a league winner for you guys. So, I, I, I you trust the bike now? This is... Uh... I don't think he'll get 29 carries again, and I don't think he'll be putting up 170 yards again, but you, he's trustworthy enough for a flex, for sure. You trust him more than Daryl Henderson or Malcolm Brown? Fuck, yeah. The only thing I don't like is he doesn't get many targets in the passing game. Yeah, he had two catches, but still. If he does I, have only a bad three rushing targets. game, like only 60 rushing yards, no touchdowns, he's not going to be able to make it up with the passing game. This is true. This is true. But it's the Jets, so, like... They actually have a better run defense than people give them credit for, but that number is also because skewed. because they're getting thrown on. Exactly. They just get thrown on so much that nobody needs yeah. to run the ball. The thing about the Jets, though, is they actually... I don't think it was the most, but I it, it was close to allowing the most receptions to running backs this year. Yeah, they're out there. Uh, so we'll move on to the wide receivers. Robert Woods, you're starting. Cooper Cup, you're starting. How about Josh Reynolds? Is he worth a start this week against no. in this good matchup? He's not worth a flex option against I this Jets team. Be, just because this game could get out of hand quickly. I'd say, yes, I'd say this is probably the best week you could trust him, but I'm not saying that's a hundred percent. I'd rather play him in a possible shootout game than a game that's going to be like 30 to 3. That is true. That is true. I, you know, a fun little thing I heard. The Jets have scored on every single opening drive this year, but yet are last in the league in scoring. How does that make sense? And Ace, man, knows how to script the first eight, ten plays, but after that, he's just winging it. He's so good, man. So good. <laughs> So we'll move on to uh, well, I mean, we can mention the tight ends. I don't think they're going to be of value in this in this game. Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett. Who do you trust more down the stretch? Higby. You like Higby? Yeah. I I don't like either of them, but if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick Higby. Yeah, Higby had uh, he's two straight weeks now. His snap count's finally above in the 80s. He's just not being involved in the offense too much. He's got a touchdown, though. I'd have to agree with you. He's out on the midfield more. I trust Higby down the stretch if you got to roll out with one of these tight ends. So we'll move on to the next game. And this one's uh, this one's got potential for game of the week, maybe, maybe even game of the year with the news of uh, Drew Brees. Finally coming back from his injury. We got the Kansas City Chiefs at the New Orleans Saints. Holy shit, Kamara's going to be back, guys. We think. Oh, I mean, we don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, he, he wasn't back last week with a touchdown? No, I mean just in the receiving game. Like, we're going to see, like, one of Alvin Kamara's classic 10 targets for 8 catches two touchdowns he's gonna be good this week too. it's funny you say that because he had all of what you said last week just not the touchdowns he had 10 targets he had seven receptions for 44 yards just no touchdowns just now it's gonna be consistent in the fantasy playoffs man i wish i made it yep the, and i just got news today that michael thomas is going to the ir he's gonna be done for the rest of the season so smash alvin kamara especially now with your breeze but we should probably talk about the Chiefs first. Patrick Mahomes, you're starting him. I don't care what defense he's playing. Every time. He played the Dolphins last week through three picks, but he still had three t three touchdowns and over 300 passing yards. You're starting him. Start Plain and simple. Kill too. Yeah, he's stupid. He's so fast. <laughs> Travis Kelsey. I, at this point, Kelsey is a wide receiver too. He's not even a tight end. This guy averages... Probably about seven catches a game. It is stupid. He's got two straight weeks of double-digit targets, four straight weeks of eight receptions. He's got three touchdowns in that four-game stretch. He's he's too good, man. Those are the two people in this offense that I trust the most, though. Tyreek Hill, well, three. Tyreek Hill, Patrick Mahomes, and Kelsey. Do you trust Edwards Hilaire or Le Le'Veon Bell in this matchup? 
I know Miles Sanders it just went 100 plus yards on him. Don't forget about Hurts. And Hurts, but that's quarterback. But uh, I do not like them both this week. Singletary touchdown. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, I. Saints gave up 200 yard rushers last week. I don't see them doing it again. And the, and the Chiefs are just not a running team. They just decide to throw the ball whenever they want. But we like Tyreek Hill. We like Kelsey. Do we like anybody else like Watkins, Robinson, Hardman maybe? Because uh, this has shootout potential. Maybe Watkins. Yeah, well, I think Watkins would be a decent dart throw. Uh, and yeah, that's probably it. So Mahomes, Hill, Kelsey, plug it in. Edwards, Hilaire, and Bell. Eh. Who who would you rather play, Edwards, Hilaire, or Watkins? Edwards, Hilaire. All right. He's starting to get the targets in the passing game now. Finally. There you go. There it is. I, if if you had to choose between those two in a flex, it is Edwards, Hilaire. So we'll move on to the Saints. Drew Brees starting. Kamara, do you trust? Do you? Do you, do you trust Drew Brees? Yep. He is coming off a brutal injury with the the collapsed lung, the broken ribs. That's that's all my concern is. So he might he might throw even shorter passes now. Yeah, well, come here, man. Yeah, Forty <laughs> point game from him. Yep. Even even more reason for Alvin Kamara. <laughs> Play him in but, DFS too, guys. Even though the ownership's gonna be insanely high. I do have a question, though, with how much we expect Alvin Kamara to be involved in this offense, just because, I mean, it's going to be a lot. Do we like Latavius Murray? So Maybe. He's healthy. He's healthy, right? I mean, with, with the shootout potential, yeah, he's uh, Murray is playing. Yeah, I, I think he'll do – I think he could be a good flex this week, to be honest. With Kamara this matchup. Kamara could be a lot of in the passing game, I think. Yep, with this matchup, Michael yeah. Thomas being out, and they're down on receiver. I think – I'd have to agree with you on that one. Um, with them being down, Michael Thomas, though, do we like Emmanuel Sanders? He has been erratic. But as of late, I mean, he had a touchdown last uh, week. I mean, I could trust him enough to throw him at wide receiver three just because the chance of a shootout and he's got yeah. to throw to somebody other than just Kamara. Yeah, because if they key in on Kamara, he's going to have to find somebody else. But if it ain't Emmanuel Sanders with Drew Brees starting, how about Jared Cook? We might see him burst back out of the scene. He was having a good year with Drew Brees. I'd probably wait a week. Until he got injured. Although the Chiefs do struggle against tight ends, so uh, this wouldn't be the worst. Yes, they do struggle against tight ends. Drew Brees does like throwing the tight end in the red zone, especially with Michael Thomas out. I could see Jared Cook falling into the end zone this game. And, uh, yeah, I mean, throw Emmanuel Sanders in that wide receiver flex, uh, wide receiver three flex position. I'd, I'd be okay with Cook. I know Ike's probably not. And you are playing Kamara and just reaping the benefits. Woohoo! <laughs> A lot of people have been waiting to do that. So we'll move on to our next game then. The Cleveland Browns at the New York Giants. Spoiler alert, Daniel Jones is out. It will be Colt McCoy, Ike's favorite quarterback. Avoid all Giants then. Yes, avoid all Giants. The only one I think maybe, maybe worth a start, and that's only if they get good field position, would be Wayne Gallman falling in the end zone. Yep. I don't, I don't see any. I don't see Darius Slayton making a big play. I don't see Sterling Shepard making a big play. Uh, if they do, they it's going to be all them. It's going to be all them. It's not going to be Cole McCoy throwing him a beautiful dime. Unless it's Madden. Unless it's Madden. <laughs> but uh, with Cole McCoy at quarterback, we are also going to be benching Evan Ingram. I don't trust him. I know you don't trust him. That's so, correct. So, yeah. I mean, you're, you can start Gallman, and that is it, guys. Uh, unless you want to have a bad time. So, we'll talk about Baker Mayfield. Ike, you want to talk about him? He's been hot lately. This would not be the game to be starting. 
He's got eight touchdowns in the past three games. Giants defense is actually solid. Bradbury. They were able to stop Russell Wilson. James Bradbury and Kyle w- was put on the COVID list, though, so their guy that has been st- shutting down the receivers this year will not be playing. I mean, Cleveland Does that... doesn't have a receiver you need to stop. You just need to stop the running game. <laughs> oh, they're throwing some shade Jarvis Landry's <laughs> way. Plays in the slap, Bradbury wouldn't have gone there anyways. Bradbury's an outside guy. I don't, I'd have to look at that. Too I don't big know if and he's... physical to go in the slot. Yeah, I I mean, I think there's better options than Baker out there. It's just he is he has been on a tear, and if they get the run game going, I you know the play action hurts over him any any day. Of the week. Yeah, I'd have to agree with Jalen Hurts this week. I don't know about any day of the week, but I would go with Jalen Hurts this week. So we'll move on to the running backs. Nick Chubb, you're playing him. I don't care how good the Giants' defense is. Nick Chubb is better. <laughs> he just is. He's got four touchdowns in the past three games. He's only had 80 rushing yards the past two games, which isn't a lot, but he's getting that. T- he's getting in the end zone, and you love that. But the guy who everyone wants to kind of know about because of this huge game last week, Kareem Hunt. Is he worth playing in this matchup against the Giants? The only reason he scored that many points last week is because he was in a shootout. I highly doubt he does that again this week. I'm glad you said it because that was my thoughts He's exactly. I agree to go back to the norm, which is 10 to 12 points. I really don't see Kareem Hunt having any value for the rest of the year unless they're in shootouts. Sure, yeah. And they play the Giants this week, the Jets next week, and Pittsburgh the final week of the season. So I don't I know don't if Kareem Hunt. That's going to be a shootout. I don't know if Kareem Hunt is viable anymore in the year. We'll see this week. With you. We'll see this week. We'll see what. The, we'll see how they use him. Because the Giants are going to be like playing the Jets, where they're probably going to be up running the ball a lot, where they won't have to pass, and that's going to be just like the next game. So I could see that. This could also possibly be one of those games too with Colt McCoy leading the charge because they're not gonna they're not gonna get a lot of points. Right. So I think you're good bo- starting both of them. Nick Chubb solid RB one. I think Kareem Hunt's more of a flex RB two. Low end RB two. Uh, Jarvis Landry though he's been picking up the slack since Odell has been out. He has three games. Uh, well he was one target short last week of having three games as double digit targets. Uh, six receptions last week, eight receptions in the two weeks before then. I think he's worth a start. Flex. Uh, Wide receiver three. Don't be surprised if he does bad. I think he's he's one of those super not sexy plays this year. He just he's not fun to play, but he gets the targets, man. He's kind of like Cole Beasley in past years. With with Odell out, like he's only got he only has one game of over a hundred yards, only one game of <laughs> over eighty yards, but he's getting targets galore since Odell's been out. So I think he's viable as wide receiver three just because of the volume. Rashard Higgins though, you think he's worth a flex option this week? He had ten targets last week. He had nine the week before. He's had six targets, uh, six receptions, back-to-back weeks, and two touchdowns. Probably but, not the game to be starting on. Yeah, I think he got lucky with Baltimore last week just because it was a shootout to get the output he had. The one thing, like you said, though, with James Bradbury covering the outside, him being out, Rashard Higgins might be able to take care, take advantage of that. They're going to be running a lot. The Giants can't stop the run necessarily so like you said see a heavy dose of Nick Chubb maybe Kareem Hunt it's weird the Browns are showing that they could play both ways they could play in a shootout and hang in there and they could just beat you down in the run the difference is is the difference is is they beat you down in the run and win and then lose in the shootouts (laughs) oh man did I just see Jake Kumaroff catching a pass for the Buffalo Bills First off, it's Jake Kumaro. Interesting. 
But Austin Hooper. You're Been mentioning him this too week. Many times. Yep, I, I don't trust Watch him. That dude. Yep. So that's this game. <laughs> you, Nick Chubb, good. Kareem Hunt, all right. Wayne Gallman, last last resort. This is my last well, almost last game. Second to last, it's we got the uh, <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers at the Cincinnati Bengals. What other I think games we'll... after this? Touche. I was looking <laughs> at the uh, Thursday night game, Mike. You got really me there. The you got me there. We're on our last game, and it is not a good one. <laughs> the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Cincinnati Bengals. I think this could be another quick one, honestly, for the Bengals side at least. I don't want to start anybody. Nope. If you have to uh, play Tyler Boyd and then T. Higgins in that order, probably in flex. I actually trust T. Higgins more than Tyler Boyd at this point. All right, that's a wash then, so don't start either of them. <laughs> Plus, you're going to have Ryan Finley starting this week. News of Brandon Allen is not going to be playing, so you got new another new quarterback throwing the ball. So I, I don't trust any receivers. Definitely don't be playing Giovanni Bernard. <laughs> no, please don't play Giovanni Bernard. And then definitely don't play Drew Sample. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, so we'll move on to the Steelers. And Big Ben. He struggled last week against uh, who the hell did they play? Buffalo. I had to threw... him this week too. You don't like him against this great matchup in the Bengals? It's not a good matchup. Why is it not? Bengals are actually somewhat good against quarterbacks. I think that number skewed a little bit because of the run game, though. What run game? Uh, teams run a lot on the Bengals, so they don't have to throw the ball. Do they? Kind of like. It's kind of like the opposite of the Seahawks where they throw so much and the run numbers are skewed. Yeah, I mean, remember when we were talking earlier uh, in the year they were fucking through John Ross and the cornerbacks training because they were so fucking deprived of cornerbacks, and that's Bengals how he got hurt. They were middle of road scoring against uh, uh, running backs, against quarterbacks. Wow. Pretty low. Bottom half of the league only allowed just over 20 points a game to quarterbacks. Man, the Bengals, who the hell have they been playing lately? <laughs> <laughs> right? Jesus. I To go with that, uh, Big Ben's average target of distance is like five lately, so I just don't like him. I think something's wrong with his shoulder. He's using it too much. Their bye week was like week three. He's probably tired, man. It probably is. My only argument is the Pittsburgh Steelers has no run game right now. I just don't like the Steelers as a team, to be honest, right now. I don't think like, they're as good as their record shows. Like, James Conner only had 10 rushing attempts last week for 18 yards, and then Jalen Samuels only had four rushing attempts for 15 yards. Like, these guys aren't even cracking 80 yards rushing. Benny Snell had three for 14 there is no run game whatsoever and i think it's just gonna have to force ben to throw it that's not good for them no it's not good at all but if he's forced to throw it i think juju smith schuster is a good play this week uh, uh yeah i like him more than deontay johnson especially deontay johnson having this dropping problem yeah right where did this come from he got benched last week in the first half because he kept dropping the ball and then came in the second half and he's a little better. But, I mean, yeah, I trust Juju to have a good game and then d between Deontay Johnson and Claypool, I don't know who to trust there. I don't want to play either of them this week. I think Claypool could be due for a touchdown. I mean, he he had he hasn't scored since week eleven. I wouldn't be surprised. But uh, out of those three, where would you put Eric Ebron in that list? I would put Juju first. And do you think because of this 
Deontay Johnson dropping problem that they Ben might be leaning more going to Ebron? Uh, I mean, he's been actually pretty good lately. He's got, he had five yeah, targets last games, week. He's had 11 targets. But, again, since uh, Big Ben's arm is a little shot, that probably does help Ebron a little bit more in the red zone and stuff like that. Yep, so, I mean. He might be a risky tight end play, but there's not many tight ends to play. No, not many tight ends, and... Yeah, so I mean, I I would play Ebron, I would play Juju, I would play Ben, and I don't know if I'd play a running back. Would you play a James Conner? I mean, you have to. Yeah, I'd throw him in the flex. All right, I think that I think that was, that's it. We're gonna call it a day because uh, that's that's the last game. How you feeling, Ike? All those game previews. I feel good, man. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll call it then. Um. Thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in and listening to this week. Uh, hopefully, we have helped you out enough to make a decision and help you win your fantasy playoff week this week if you're in it. If not, hopefully, we help you make a decision to keep you out of last place. <laughs> uh. You can find me. I on Twitter at be like underscore Mike with two eyes. I write the weekly trend uh, article for Fantasy Six Pack every week. Comes out Monday, and uh, I mean this week I filled in for Dylan for his tight end streaming article. Uh, I don't know if you guys can find that, but if you want to, go ahead, give it a look. Ike, why don't you tell him where you're at? You can go to my Twitter, which is Ike two one two one. I do the injury impact article. Sometimes I do the start sit, so check it out. Yeah, go check it out, guys. Uh, and that will be it for uh, our week 15 previews. You guys have a uh, great week. We'll Peace. talk to you later. <laughs>